Okay, the drawing on the left is exactly the same as in the last video about atomic structure and theory. And so it is a beryllium atom. It's a model of a beryllium atom. It has a nucleus with protons, shown in red. And I'll write those as P plus because they are positively charged. And it has neutrons in blue, which we sometimes write as N0, showing the charge is zero. And then around the nucleus are these electrons, which are E minus. And they are, for now, we're just going to call the area around the nucleus where the electrons are just a cloud, an electron cloud. Um, a little bit later, we'll start talking about orbitals that the electrons take. You may have heard of S, P, or D orbitals. But for right now, we're just going to call them the electron cloud. And so this um, atom is beryllium because it has four protons. And this number tells you that. The number on top on the left is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And that is beryllium. Okay, but the atom on the right is almost the same, except one difference. It has one more blue dot, so it has one more neutron. Okay, it is still beryllium. And it's still beryllium because it's the number of protons. It tells us it's beryllium. So because there's still an atomic number of four, it's still beryllium, but now it has one more neutron. The difference between these two atoms is that they are isotopes of one another. So isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons, so they have the same name, but they have a different number of neutrons. Because so they, both of these have four protons, they both have four electrons, which balance the charge, and then they have a different number of neutrons. Okay, so let's look at two set, different sets of atomic symbols and compare the number of particles, meaning protons and neutrons. So first we're going to look at this set and look at the atomic number and the mass number and decide if the particles, if the protons are the same or different and if the neutrons are the same or different. So uh, stop the tape wherever you need to to answer these questions. All right, so since the bottom number is the same for both of them, they both have the same number of protons. And since the number of neutrons is given by the difference between the top and the bottom, they have a different number of neutrons. So the answer to the first one is B. Same number of protons, different number of neutrons. Let's look at the second one. In this case, the lower number is 1 and 2, so they're different. And because they're different, they are also different elements. One is hydrogen, one is helium. So we have the choice of C and D. And then the difference between, even though the top number is the same for both, the number of neutrons is given by the difference between the top and the bottom. And those are different, so the correct answer is D. Finally, the third one. We have two different atomic numbers, 6 and 7, so they are different. And the difference between 14 and 6 and 15 and 7 is the same. They're both 8. So in this case, we have the same number of protons and a different number of neutrons. OK, so if you look at a periodic table, you're going to see that there's a number usually below the element. Okay, the number on the top, sometimes it's written in the upper right-hand corner, sometimes it's written in the upper left-hand corner, but there'll be the atomic number, which is the number of protons will be in there. But you won't see the mass number. Remember, going back, the mass number is always a number. Okay, it is a count of particles, so it's going to be a whole number. But this number is not a whole number. So what is that? Atomic number and mass number are both whole numbers and they are whole numbers because they are counts of particles. And we never have partial particles, so they're always whole numbers. All right, so that number in the bottom is very s similar. It's close to the mass number, but it's not a whole number. And what it is is the atomic mass, which is a weighted average. of the different masses of the isotopes. So a weighted average of the isotopic 
masses. And how is it weighted? It's weighted by how they are in nature, how much the isotopes occur in nature. So it's weighted average of the isotopic masses of the elements naturally occurring isotopes. Okay, so in nature, elements will typically have more than one isotope occurring in a natural abundance, and they will have, maybe they might have a lot of one isotope and a little of another, or they may have several isotopes. But the atomic mass is a weighted average of all those masses as they occur in the proportions they do in nature. Okay, so let's do an example. Look at silicon at the bottom here, and um, the units of atomic mass, by the way, are AMUs, which are simply atomic mass units. Okay, so silicon has a atomic mass of 28.086, as shown in the box, and that is because it is mostly the isotope of silicon, which has which is 28 particles. Okay, so it's very close to 28 because it has mostly that. And by mostly, it actually is 92% that isotope. And then there is some of two other isotopes. There's some 29 silicon and some 30 silicon, which makes the average be a little bit higher than 28. Okay, but can we predict what the abundances are by looking at this number? And chlorine gives you an example of how you can't. Okay, it's very close. The atomic, the mass number, sorry, the atomic mass for chlorine is very close to 35 and a half. So you might guess that it's half 35 and half 36, but it's not. It's not. Okay, what it really is is 75% chlorine 35 and 25 percent chlorine 37. There really isn't any chlorine 36. So you can't just guess what the isotope abundances are by looking at that number. All right, and finally you can calculate atomic mass and you can do that by if you know all the right numbers. So let's do an example of copper. Copper has two isotopes And those two isotopes are copper 63 and copper 65. And it turns out that 69.16% of naturally occurring copper is copper 63 and 30.18%, sorry, point, wrong number, wrong number. Um, 30.84% is copper 65. All right, and the masses, the mass of copper 63 is actually 62.9298 AMU, and the mass of copper 65 is actually 64.9278 AMU. And the reason they're not... Um, right on a whole number is because they're all based on carbon. Carbon 12 is the actual basis, so the numbers are a little bit off of actual whole numbers. All right, but we can calculate the atomic mass because if we know the mass of the first isotope and we know its abundance, we multiply those, then we look at the next isotope, we do the mass of it, multiply it by its abundance, and we keep doing that for all the different isotopes that we have. In this case, there's only two, so we're only going to have two terms. So the atomic mass for copper equals 62.9298 AMU times its abundance, which will be written as a uh, decimal, 69118, I wrote one six, so it must be one six.
and then add to that the mass of the second isotope, 64.9278 AMU, and multiply that by its abundance, which is 0 0.3084. Again, the, the percents are ex expressed as a decimal. Okay, do the math, and you should get 63.546 AMU, and if you check that on a periodic table, that should be within... Uh, however many digits they report, that should be the, the answer that is given. So that is how you can calculate atomic mass, and of course you could also, if you're given atomic mass and you have something else in this equation as an unknown, you could solve for any of the variables in the equation.